Bishop Maponga has a new video when he was at a radio station over in Zim. And in this particular interview, he had it at a Star, at Star FM radio station. And he, he said some things that, you know, even, even as a person who doesn't believe God, I think you would just rather not say these things. And uh, you would just rather not. But, hey, it's Bishop Papong. It's the reality show, the Daily Christian Commentary. If you other episodes down today, they'll be down in the pinned comments. It's only right now that I realized it's Heritage Day. So, yeah, Heritage Day it is. Hello, how are you? Oh, and you're talking about God, the creator of all. Who mm. creates the devil? Who creates sin? Who puts a snake? So, in? when he starts it by saying, "You know, God, the Creator of all," you, you're like, mm, "Okay, okay." <laughs> then, then he flips the scripts, and he, the he goes that route. Children. Who creates the problem? And the Wait, so God created children. the problem? Who creates sin? Who puts a snake in the blankets of his own children? Who put a snake in the blankets of his own children? But the Bible says God who does not give. When they ask for bread, he does not give a snake. So, for him to say, God gives a snake. Wow. Continue. Who creates the problem? And then the same God comes with solutions. And Christianity is meant to be a solution to our problem of sin which we were not involved in as human beings in terms of creating that narrative to begin to put human beings in a battle between the devil and God which were not involved in the beginning and condemn humanity into the abyss of sinfulness without out of participation I think we are rather taking human beings as ponies on the supernatural narrative my own con what i'm going to call observation when god they have problems human beings might not get involved in divine problems because if the god if the god we're talking about is a problem with the devil where do human beings fit into the whole narrative if god must now kill his son to solve human problems why not kill the devil why, why, why all of a sudden come around with the divine solution? See, so, yeah, this idea that the Mapongas of the world have answers or they provide answers while questioning God who gives an answer. I find that that particular point or that thread of, of, um, of assumption of an answer you know, to God's answer. So God gives an answer. It's not enough. It's not the right one. Remember that other SDA pastor who came out and said he has questions for God. How can God wipe out the world and the whole nine hajas? It's this idea that when God gives an answer, it seems not to be enough. You want another answer. You know, you, you might be... <laughs> You might be thinking it proper, better than God. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> you see, there is an aspect of God's wisdom that to question is blasphemy. And to question, it's actually unbelief. You know? And so when God gave an answer concerning forgiveness and reconciling mankind to himself, it had, because um, remember, God gave man free will. Right? God gave man free will. And if you're going to, uh, to, to look at what choices man took when he had everything and he chose contrary to everything, the one thing that he was not given access to. The one thing that he was told, don't touch this one thing. He wasn't given ten commandments. 
He was not given a hundred l- rules and laws. Mm-mm. He was given one thing not to do. And he did that. Solutions. And Christianity is meant to be a solution to our problem of sin, which we were not involved in as human beings. In them. I don't understand. So we were not involved in while we were told not to touch that tree. Of creating that narrative. So creating the narrative. They were in the middle of it. To begin to put human beings in a battle between the devil and God, which were not involved in the beginning. Because, you know what? We don't even have to listen to the whole thing again. My point here is that, you see, the very thing that Bishop Maponga is doing right now shows you that in that garden, we would have still chosen to eat the one thing we were told not to eat. You could have been given everything. They went for the one thing that they were told not to eat. What Bishop Maponga is, is questioning when he, when he questions God's freedom to mankind, he, he, you see, he, he's proving the point. When he's stating all these things that are blasphemous about God and so forth, you see, these things prove what happened in the garden was that man prioritized the wrong thing. And as at the cost of that, we now have what we have now. <laughs> you know? And that is not uh, like saying people shouldn't question. But Bishop Maponga's thing is no longer questioning. Like, he, he, he knows the answers to these things. But he chooses contrary. Bishop Maponga is right at the point where Adam and Eve were where when they ate the fruit it's when a man decides god can't be the only answer there must be something else and when we come to that point or when we when we find ourselves at that point what then is there a satisfying answer is there an answer that actually satisfies why he sent Jesus to redeem mankind or you would rather there be a different question a different answer because we we then start to presume we have a better answer because the, the, the very same rebellion that you see in Adam and Eve is the very same rebellion that we are functioning under so by the question you actually prove <laughs> you prove the narrative. You show uh, the idea of being front and center. Right? That, that, that mankind is, can be front and center, the question and answer. Whereas the answer brought destruction. The very destruction that they themselves will go to complain about. You know? When you see Cain coming back to God and wanting to complain about the harshness of God's judgment over him. Where does that come from? It came from the decisions that he took up. 